I would like to introduce Dr. Robert uh, Ambrose, who's going to talk to us about uh, NASA work and his vision for robotics in this area. He uh, graduated from UT at Austin in mechanical engineering and finished uh, his, his, he had his master's at Washington University in St. Louis. He's the division chief of software robotics and simulation division at uh, NASA Johnson Space Center. There are five branches there that work with robotics and simulation and so on in, in uh, uh, different uh, ways. He's a technologi uh, technologist for NASA Space Technologies Mission Directorate and this is overseeing uh, research, formulating new starts in the area of robotics and automated systems. He is also the technical point of contact for NASA's collaboration in the National Robotics uh, Institute. So I would like to uh, welcome Dr. Ambrose to the lectern. I see a lot of folks here that I recognize, and thanks for uh, coming to hear a talk uh, that's a little different for me. I'm going to be giving kind of a Chamber of Commerce talk, which uh, might not go well since I'm an engineer, but uh, <laughs> let's see how this works. <clears throat> um, I've lived in a number of cities over my life and always seem to keep coming back to Houston. Uh, I've lived in Boston and Chicago and Austin, but I definitely consider Houston home. And uh, of late, I have uh, seen some things that uh, give me a feeling that something big is going to happen here in the area of robotics. Uh, today's kickoff of this new center is, is one example of the things that I'm detecting that uh, give me uh, great hope that uh, things might go big here. So uh, with that, I'd like to just always tell audiences what I'm going to tell them first, and then at the end I might remind you what I told you. Um, the two takeaways are uh, these, that uh, Houston has the right ingredients to really go big in robotics, and I'm going to go through what I think those ingredients are, and uh, why I think uh, um, we're in the right place at the right time. And timing is the second one. Uh, I see a push by the city of Houston and more broadly this region that could give us kind of that extra shove that we need uh, to take those ingredients and uh, turn them into something big. So ingredients, looking down on our region, uh, you know, what do we have going on? And uh, what would be an important kind of ingredient for an area to really thrive and be innovative and be a center of excellence? Uh, in robotics. Well, we do have a large federal lab here. Uh, in most studies looking for uh, how to get an area uh, at the forefront of uh, a new area of technology, having a federal lab as kind of an anchor tenant um, is important. And we certainly are, are, are fortunate to have the Johnson Space Center. Uh, it's a multi-billion dollar a year uh, lab. Uh, it is a little bit out in the burbs as far as Houston is concerned, but um, in many ways the city seems to be growing in our direction. Um, in particular for robotics, we've got a large robotics crew. Now, following me, uh, Dr. Kim Hambuckin will be talking about many of the robots in this photo, uh, so I'm going to leave that to her. But suffice to say, uh, we have a, one of the biggest robotics groups in the country, actually. Uh, we work with um, mobile systems, we work with manipulator systems, we work on robots that can do inspection and repair. Uh, really the main focus is robots that safely work around people. Uh, compared to other NASA centers that have vigorous robotics program, that's really NASA JSC's niche. Robots that can work with people. Uh, our good friends at JPL uh, build robots for uh, missions that are far beyond human reach today. Uh, our focus are the robots that will go with human explorers into space and in the, uh, the plans that have been recently announced by NASA leadership, there is a strong pull for that. Uh, one of the greatest things I think NASA has ever done, uh, construction of the International Space Station was done as a mix, a T 
team that was a mix of humans and robots working together. It looks like our next challenge is going to be to build a new facility or spacecraft even further from Earth, where it's likely to be done only with robots, and then the people will arrive. That's harder than what we did on the space station, but it's a logical next step, and it's one that we're in position to do. If you can pull that off, then you don't have to keep people there year-round, which would be extremely expensive. Uh, having a facility run by people, by robots, and visited by people periodically uh, might also have some important terrestrial spin-offs, and you'll see that in some of the robots that, that uh, Dr. Campo can show. But what other ingredients might be important for a region to really step up in robotics? Well, what we're here to celebrate today is, is a critical ingredient, a strong university presence in the region. And I'm happy to say that each of the universities that we have in the area have similar interests in robotics. Um, and yet, they're each going after different niches. The niche that U of H Clear Lake has pursued in, in software is particularly important and a good fit. It, it complements many of the things that I'm seeing at other universities. Now, much of this has just been by, by good luck that the universities are going after different areas. Uh, but some of it is also needs driven. At the Texas Medical Center, there are just so many different universities, but obviously very focused on robotic applications in medicine. Uh, there's uh, TIER, which is focused on rehabilitation. There are multiple UT schools there, and in full disclosure, my wife's a professor at one of them, um, focused on robotic applications in ecology or in orthopedics. Uh, there's Baylor, uh, a number of other schools, schools of dentistry, school of nursing. Uh, it's, it's, you know, many towns would be happy to have the medical center as their main business district. It's so big. Um, uh, in Houston, it's, it's one of many. Uh, then uh, down on Galveston, there's another excellent medical school at UTMB, uh, where they have a, a bio-level safety four facility, which has its own unique challenges uh, for robotics. Now, thinking a little more generally uh, at a, a more conventional universities that have engineering programs, uh, Rice, U of H downtown, and uh, now U of H Clear Lake have emerging engineering programs that with an emphasis in, in robotics. And they're all a little different. Um, uh, there's an event maybe somewhat similar to this that Rice is holding later this summer, and U of H main campus is also uh, working in the area of robotics. And I think that uh, that's very exciting. Uh, there are also a couple other universities a little bit northwest of here, uh, depending on how you draw the, uh, the Houston region. You know, I consider Katy uh, East San Antonio. So, uh, uh, you know, they also have expressed uh, interest in uh, working with us in this part of, of the state. Uh, I think they generally, in much of the state, looks to Houston as a, uh, a center for industrial uh, activity. And uh, both A&M and UT Austin would like to uh, coordinate anything to do with us. And they've got large robotics programs that we know well. So, uh, key ingredient, a uh, nice anchor tenant with a big federal lab, uh, a strong university culture. Uh, what else might be needed as an ingredient? Well, it turns out um, where many universities are in small towns, I you know, think maybe Purdue, um, small college towns, um, we are likely the most industrialized city in America. Uh, I've spent some time with the Greater Houston Partnership lately, so I've been just getting all kinds of Chamber of Commerce facts. It's kind of scary. Uh, the, the one that I heard just most recently, uh, you all heard that Houston's the fourth largest city in the, the country, but what I heard uh, just last week is we have the most manufacturing jobs of any city in the United States. We just passed LA. The number I heard was 530,000 manufacturing jobs in Houston. Um, I've also found, I found a couple sources that said, and pretty clearly for the last almost 10 years, we have the most industrial jobs. Now, I'm not sure what the difference between an industrial job and a manufacturing job is. I'm just an engineer. But um, it both, <coughs> both indicate to me that there's a lot going on in Houston. We're not a small college town. We are a mass 
massive industrialized region of the country. And if you look around the constellation of logos, uh, this, is, this is big business. And in every one of those companies that I've talked to, they're coming to us asking, how, how is our business about to be disrupted by this automation and robotics wave? They're worried slash interested in how their industries are going to change. And pretty much every one of those is what I will call a robot consumer. And not just consuming robots, but consuming people who are educated in designing, building, installing, maintaining, programming those robots. Um, Houston right now, I believe, and I don't have data for this, so this is just my speculation, we are a huge importer of robotics and autonomy in this town, just with that industrialization. If those companies that had the 530 manufacturing jobs just spent 2% of their payroll buying robots every year, that would be over a billion dollars. It's a pretty conservative estimate for how much they'd be spending on an annual basis. If we just had, on the supplier side, locked up the Houston market alone, that would be a, you know, probably a multi-billion dollar robotics and autonomy uh, niche. Not a bad goal to have. If you just were to look at the number of people that all of these companies will need, I don't think all of the universities that I showed could ever meet the needs. So I think Houston is both a, a net importer of robots and robot smart people. And uh, that's an opportunity for people that would like to produce robots and robot smart people like your new center here. So what other ingredient do we really need? We've got a big federal lab, we've got a bunch of universities that are getting organized in the area of robotics, we've got a massive pull from the biggest industrialized city in America. What other ingredient might we, we need? Well, good news, we've got that too. We've got a lot of kids. We're a big city. We're a young city. A lot of those kids' parents are engineers. We're an engineering city. Now, I don't think we have enough seats at all those universities, so I think we're exporting these kids. Because they can't, you know, there's no way they could fill, you know, they, would, they would more than fill all of the, the slots at all of our universities. So we need to think about that. But at JSC, we are um, happy to cause that problem to our, for our universities. To have so many kids come out of high school looking for a degree program that they're overflowing Houston. Uh, and we really are. Um, you know, when you're thinking about the future, it's nice to be able to spot something that's inevitable. Now, you don't know the timing necessarily, but if it's inevitable, you know, that's important. And nothing is more inevitable than demographics. Demographics are our future, and we've got a huge number of robot-savvy young children who are graduating high school and looking for what their next steps will be. Uh, we have hundreds of thousands of them in the city of Houston. Uh, they're very turned on by robotics. It might be that they then move on to some other things as long as they don't go in, you know, to say, law. Oh, I'm fine with that. Um, a little bias there. I clearly got to work in my chamber of commerce. <laughs> but, um, you know, robotics is what we're seeing at NASA is kind of a gateway drug to get kids excited about engineering and technology and STEM fields. And they might go into medicine and they might go into lots of other great things, uh, but we can get them started. And if a few of them go into robotics, uh, there's certainly that need in our, our, our region. So I think we've got those four ingredients. Uh, we've got a big government lab. We've got strong universities that are already self-organizing to engage this, uh, this new challenge in robotics and autonomy. We have the most massive industrial complex in the country, and it's only growing. And we have a demographic wave of smart young people ready to be given challenges. Um, it's time to get cooking. So, uh, inevitability, you know, it's gonna happen. It's gonna happen somewhere. Uh, might as well happen here. And I'm seeing some signs now that it's gonna be happening soon. 
So, so there's some things that might give us a little kick in the pants here to get organized more broadly, and uh, I want to talk about those. This is a slide that came out from the city of Houston. They've identified three areas that they would like to, to focus on for the, for the region. Um, previous events, and this is you know, decades back, they've attempted to do some other things like you know, focus on oil and gas. The problem is when government tries to explain to oil and gas how to produce oil and gas, it doesn't go well. <laughs> yeah, they're pretty good at figuring out how to produce oil and gas. <clears throat> so instead of going after applications like they had attempted previously, they had a different thought. They had a thought that maybe we should go after some more cross-cutting things and then let our industry apply them. And so here are the three, and I think you have two centers now aligned with these here at the U of H Clear Lake, so I think you've been paying attention. Um, uh, the three are cybersecurity, an industrial internet of things, and robotics. Uh, so as we've been thinking about this at the Johnson Space Center, you know, we're certainly interested in cybersecurity and the Internet of Things, um, uh, but we're, we're thinking that we're definitely going to engage strongly in the area of robotics. We'll, we'll be tracking the two others, and we're certainly more in the consumer role there, uh, but we would like to lean forward and, and help uh, get the community going. Now, space applications of robotics and autonomy should be a small subset of the overall picture. But if we can help get everybody together, you know, we will be happy to do that. Uh, so thinking about Houston in particular and what would be a good fit for us, um, here are three ways to kind of slice it. And here I'm slicing it more by verb, more by sector. And the sectors that I'm thinking of are manufacturing, uh, material handling, like in logistics, and then what we were more focused on, uh, robots used in, in remote exploration. Starting with manufacturing, the ones that seem to be strong and with good first derivatives, that means growth, um, are the following. Uh, plastics, Houston owns plastic manufacturing, and we have a very strong metallic manufacturing sector in the city. Uh, refining, you know, we almost invented that. Uh, and then a few emerging ones that are, are going well, uh, biofarm and um, medical devices are both really starting to move in the city. Uh, aerospace has had a couple good years and continues to, to grow. And finally, uh, food production is coming on strong. And that's a, that's a really interesting one. Uh, but is again very critical uh, to our society, and it's it's going robotic. Logistics is also important and particularly good for Houston. Uh, we've got an enormous port, good airports, good rail, um, a central location. As far as the robots are, con are concerned, we have great weather. Um, <laughs> Uh, you know, but let's get back to location. You know, it's really good for logistics. And so we've seen some big moves recently in the region. Um, you know, there are lots of companies that have distribution centers in and around Houston. Uh, there's a, a new one. Uh, Amazon is um, building a new, what they call a fulfillment center. Now, when I was a kid, that was a place you didn't want to ever get caught in. But now a fulfillment center is a big time robotics and automation factory. It has tens of thousands of sources of material flowing into it and tens of millions of outputs rapidly shipping material to uh, consumers all around the, the region and around the world. Uh, if that's going robotic and uh, automation big time, hiring a lot of people uh, as part of that. Uh, again, we've got a great location, and you would expect to see even more of that at the Port of Houston, handling uh, bulk materials and handling containerized materials are obviously both really good functions uh, for robotic and automated systems. And then lastly, 
uh, what I think of as exploration, and this is where you're remotely interacting with the machine uh, at increasing levels of autonomy, either because it's so small that it's down in, it's inside a human's artery, where you, you're not going to go in there yourself, um, or because it's in a hostile environment, like on the seafloor, or in, uh, on the other side of the world, top side. Or in our case, it's in space, increasingly in deep space, uh, assembling and taking care of a facility waiting for the crew members to arrive. Uh, these are three good sectors with specific applications that are customized for Houston today. And they're ones that the, the city has recognized, and they're ones where I think uh, the U of H uh, focus on robot software uh, can have a big impact. Clearly, uh, the demand is going to be there. So, uh, these industries are going to be pulling, they are going to be importing both ro robots and robot savvy people. So, I think it's really just up to us. If we do nothing, we don't organize, you know, we will just keep importing them uh, into Houston. Uh, but I'll leave you with this last thought. Um, well, I have actually come to one more thing. Uh, there are a few things that we are. Um, we are doing in, Houston, in uh, the Joint Space Center to try and impact uh, some of these ingredients today. Uh, we have a intern day that we have invited folks to attend. This summer I've got 60 interns. I'm probably only going to hire a couple of them. And so my goal is every one of them should get a job in the region. So for the last two or three years we've invited uh, local companies to our intern day and my, my goal is every one of them has a job offer. And last year, sure enough, everyone that was a senior, as they walked out of the room, people followed them, and they were making offers on the spot. Uh, we're open to expanding that to even more uh, companies. Uh, and I want to thank uh, uh, Maytag for helping us with that and helping us again this summer. Uh, that's going to be on July 4th, and we've sent out invitations to local industry. Um, we're also trying something new this summer. Um, calling it the prototyping workshop where some group comes in with a problem and as quickly as a week we prototype a robotic solution and then they, they go off with that. It's a new idea. Uh, it's something that we've seen in other countries where government labs help industry. We're going to be experimenting with that. Um, Dr. Hambuck hopefully will mention a big challenge event that she's running. Uh, she's got a million dollars in prize money to give out for this challenge and uh, likely others that will follow. Uh, of course, we do a lot of public-private partnerships working with industry, and uh, of course, uh, postdocs and grants and scholarships. So I'll leave you uh, with this thought. Uh, will Houston continue to import robots and robot-savvy people for our industries and our new adventures? Or we can build them ourselves. I think you know where I stand on that. I think I, I've got some friends here that would like to help, and I encourage you to um, reach out, and let's get our, our regional organization.